Hello there, YouTubers, TikTokers, subscribers, non-subscribers, and all of you who are watching this video. Welcome to my channel. I'm your host, RoseRed17, and this video is about Rave Master, Volume 11, Chapters 80 through 88. Now, from where we left off in the last volume, everyone is in a panic as they try to get through a storm to get to Siphonia. Haru and Blue are outside, refusing to move, as Haru will wait for the time to strike with his sword to clear a path. Inside the ship, Ellie starts to feel terrified of the storm, so she goes in her room to rest, while everyone else is doing everything they can to survive the storm. Back at the Empire headquarters, one of their bases had been distracted and learning about the devil from Basement 66, known as the Golden Hair Devil, has escaped his prison and went to Siphonia. Back with Haru and the others, the ship started to break apart and everyone on board is doing everything they can to stop it from happening. Haru managed to create the path that he's been waiting to do. And Ellie is in her room still frightened when some of her memories started to come back to her. It looks like she was talking to someone and she remembered that someone telling her that she's going to die. Ellie became upset about this but then Haru came in immediately to cheer her up by showing her the road to Siphonia. While hovering over the site, Ellie told Haru about the idea of being in Siphonia in the past and that pieces of her memories have come back to her. Ellie might have realized that she is from Siphonia and that she has an important secret. Haru gives her a small hug and tells her no matter what secret she has, Ellie is still Ellie to him. Strange they didn't have this in the manga, but hey, they can add whatever they want in the anime. So no further questions. Anyways, the crew makes a landing as Haru rushes out to see absolutely nothing. Which shouldn't be much of a surprise due to the overdrive 50 years ago, as they suspected. Now they don't know where to start, but then suddenly Ellie starts to get a splitting headache again, and she might lead them to the city of Siphonia due to her headaches related to the gravestones. Haru wants to go back, but Ellie suggests that they keep moving forward. But the closer they get, the sicker she becomes and can barely stand. Haru is concerned about Ellie, but Let keeps telling him to move forward despite her condition. Let and Haru get into an argument and he talks some sense into Haru and reminds him why they're there. Ellie agrees with Let and Haru decide to obey for her sake. The more they walk, the stronger the headaches become for Ellie as it gets to the point of collapsing. But then, Blue stuck his nose into the ground, revealing a worldwide map showing the location of all the rays with the shining beams of light, including the ones that Haru has in his possession. Now, with the location of the two remaining rave stones, they made a decision on where to go to next until they get an unexpected visitor. Now, this uninvited guest so happens to be the antagonist of the show, the Shadow Master, known as Lucia. Now, those of you who had the Heroes crossover manga, you may have recognized them from one of the cover pages along with Zeref and Ziggy. I remember people were asking who that guy was in the back. Heck, even I had to look up what his name was. And it's kind of sad that a good antagonist can be forgetful. But he won't be for long since his grand appearance and introduction starts here after Haru and the others notice black beings revealing from the world map. Lucia reveals revealed himself to Haru along with the information about being the Shadow Master. He killed the leader of one of the strongest forces in the criminal underworld along with the crew members aboard the ship. Yep, this is one dangerous badass. Although he might have killed all the crew members on the ship, he didn't come here alone. Here is the return of the Demon Card members known now as the Blonde Demons. Also, I just realized that Lucia never said his name, so I think I might have kind of spoiled it. My bad. <clears throat> Anyways, Lucia talks about the mother of the Shadow Stone known as Sinclair and recognize Haru as the new Rave Master. Lucia starts walking forwards as Haru believes he might attack him and brings out his sword. But instead, Lucia walks past Haru and goes towards Ellie, stealing a kiss from her. She pushes him away as Lucia knows her as the girl with the Ethereon. Ellie feels disgusted as Haru and the others go in for an attack. But Lucia stops them in their tracks and walks 
walks away, telling Ellie that they will meet again at the Star Memory. Haru comes rushing towards Ellie when suddenly gets attacked by the demon cards, and then Let went after one of the members known as Jekin. I guess there's gonna be a fight between these two later on. The others discuss the reasons for coming Siphonia and once again trying to kill Ellie. Haru and Musga wants to protect Ellie, but then gets paralyzed by a pretty boy over here as he approaches Ellie and messes around with her. But then Ellie shoots up in the air telling everyone that she is fighting too. Everyone was encouraged by her bravery and Haru wants to say that he is protecting her because he likes her. Same goes for everyone else. Let might have heard it from the distance but he is more focused on killing this guy with the dragon as he is the one that killed a woman named Julia. That name rings a bell. Could she be? Oh yeah, Julia! I was wondering when she was gonna come in the picture. But here she is, who is supposed to be dead. But I wanna see what happens in this fight. Also, I don't think I'm spoiling anything because this manga is over 20 years old. Not to mention that people have seen the crossover sequels and the OVAs to this show. But enough rambling, let's get back to this chapter. Let is reminded about the dragon's law that if he fails the trial, there is no going back. The law of the dragon is that every member of the race has to go through some kind of trial and if they fail and lose their humanity they become dragons themselves. While Let is dealing with this guy, Haru, Musica, and Ellie have their own opponents to face and each one is going through some struggles. But then we see Let going through some sort of transformation when he suddenly remembers a woman named Julia and then transform into a human. Therefore he completed his trial and with his newfound power he is going to face not the guy he thinks he's going to face, but the dragon, Julia. So pretty much, Let is going to fight his dead girlfriend. Touché. It turns out that Julia is alive and has become this dragon. How can that be? Question mark. Let shares his story about her dying and him being a witness. But there is a twist to that story. It turns out it was all an illusion and that the body he buried wasn't Julia's, but somebody else's. Let couldn't kill the dragon because he starts to believe that is Julia, but instead he immobilizes her and then he starts his battle with Jekin and succeed at defeating him. The reason Jekin did what he did was because he wanted Julia. He was in love with her and wanted to keep her for himself. Let gives him the final blow, but then something happened to him. He ends up turning into a tree due to the shadow stone Jekin possesses. Now with Let defeated, the others have to deal with the problems of their opponents, including the fight between Musica and Reyna, who demands Musica to tell her the location of the Silver Ray. But Musica doesn't have a clue as he is searching for it himself and wants to destroy it. And why did Reyna think Musica knows where the item she's looking for? Well, it has to do with Riz, the man who raised Musica as his pupil, and that he was the one that stole the Silver Ray according to Reyna. Now here we get a small backstory of Reyna's past and how Riz ruined her life. It turns out that her father was falsely accused because of Riz and was executed for it. Reyna was left as an orphan, vowed to get revenge, but not on Riz, but on the king who ordered the death of her father. That is when Gale King found her and brought her into the demon cards. Like, damn, this woman had it rough. I feel sorry for her now. Reyna did manage to get her revenge on the king, but she still seeks the Silver Ray. Reyna continues telling her story as she mentions the alibi for Riz and that the king checked it out and believed that Riz isn't the culprit because he turns out to be on Garage Island during the time when the Silver Ray was stolen. However, Reyna discovered that he had an accomplice and that it wasn't Riz on Garage Island, but someone else pretending to be him to cover his track. That was the same day that that Riz took in Musica after his family was slaughtered. Musica finds it hard to believe the truth and the two get into a fight. But then he saw Reyna crying as she is desperate to get the Silver Ray back as it's very important to her. And Musica decides to let her kill him and that is where the volume ends. Yeah, I'm not joking. That is where the volume ends. I have to say, I didn't expect that, but I have seen worse cliffhangers, so I shouldn't complain too much. Well then everyone, thank you for watching, and if you are new here to this channel, you can please subscribe if you like to. You can also hit that notification button for new updates on my newest videos. Don't forget to check me out on X, TikTok, and Discord, and I will see you all in the next video. Rose for 17 out.